Hey everybody, and welcome to Sprickin Studios. I'm your host, Mr. Sprickin. Yeah! <laughs> what do I have for you today? I have something super exciting and cool, and that is our very own custom Megami device. Yes, custom kit bash, no less. And what are we bashing today? We are bashing these. We got an LBX Harlequin. As you can hear in there. And we have a Chaos and Pretty Magical Girl. Yes. We will be bashing these two kits together and creating something completely unique. Yes. I actually did it before. But, sadly, I didn't make a video of it. I don't think my YouTube channel was around when I made it. So I've actually created what I'm going to create already. Mm, not quite, but kind of. I created a custom character named Atropos. Yes, and she was one of the fates in Greek mythology. She was the one that cut the thread of life, yes, deciding when someone's life was over. Snip. And she has two sisters, two younger sisters. One of them is Lachesis, and the other one is Clotho. Clotho, yes. Clotho is the youngest one. She spins the thread, and Lachesis measures out the thread to see how long someone's life is going to be, kind of like deciding their destiny. And Atropos is the one who ends their life. Snip. So I already made Atropos. And uh, you can see her here. And she's really cool and awesome and I really enjoyed making her. So today, in this video, we are making her sister, Lachesis. Yes, she is the measurer. The fate of destiny, we'll call her. Since Atropos is kind of like the fate of death, Lachesis will be the fate of destiny. And we're going to create her today. And uh, what we decided when we originally set forth on this, and I say we, I mean me, thinking about this many moons ago, um, I wanted them to have a kind of playful, jester, harlequin feel. I've always liked that. Ever since back in the day, watching Darkwing Duck on Disney, um, Quacker Jack, he was cool. Um, and I always kind of enjoyed characters that looked like that. It was very fun. And so I thought, hmm. I like mythology and things like that, and I generally create characters kind of stemming from mythology or having mythological roots. So I decided I'm going to create these fates, and I'm going to give them kind of a non-serious yet serious kind of uh, vibe to them. And uh, so I came up with uh, this. Well, when I saw this LBX Harlequin kit and this headpiece, oh, I was sold. So I had to buy a couple of them and uh, create what was in my head, and I think it turned out pretty good as you will see. So, let's dive right into this project. I'll show you how easy it can be to make your very own custom kit and kit bash and use putty and all sorts of things. You don't have to be scared. If I can do it, anybody can do that. That's the, that's the message that I am sending to you. So let's dive right in. That's swimming. This is dying. So here's Lachesis uh, in her basic of basic forms. And that is the Megami device Magical Girl base. But we swapped out her feet and her skirt for the uh, Megami device uh, witch parts, which I think give her a nice uh, unique look, apart from her sister uh, Atropos. And we swapped out the bust with an uh, Asra Archer also a Megami device, and uh, we took the pigtails from a Frame Arms Girl kit, which is the Baihu, which I think is going to look uh, quite pretty and cute on her, and it'll give her a unique look, so it won't be like, you know, the same pigtails as her sister, which would be kind of just weird and maybe a bit lazy. <laughs> so uh, we'll go with these pigtails, which uh, work quite nice. And of course, she's missing arms, that's where our LBX uh, Harlequin arms come into play. And those are going to stick via magnets on there quite nicely, just like her sister. And we'll be able to turn them and all sorts of things, and it'll be great. Then we have our headpiece, which will be heavily modified onto this first part of the headpiece, uh, hairpiece, I should say. And uh, it'll all be one 
and easy to come on and off together. And that will look great. And for the other little details that we have, we have some uh, bows, some ribbons from our vast ribbon and bow collection here. And we're going to stick this bigger one on the chest and these little ones are going to be kind of how this headpiece stays on. So it's going to be there and then these are going to be on either side, kind of like it's a ribbon attaching this to our head. Kind of give it a little bit of function. Form and function, hand in hand. Speaking of hands, see this uh, miracle of modern engineering? Okay, maybe not. <laughs> It'll work better. So we have a, a little ball joint thingy here from Frame Arms Girl kits. Now, if you ever build them, you know you could end up with a lot of spare parts. Never throw these things away. They may seem like garbage, but they always can have uh, a use you never really thought of at the time. So all I did was I found uh, the smallest one of these. And as you can see, and it fits the wrist joint perfectly into it. And then this fits perfectly in here. Maybe not super perfectly because it's kind of a little bit loose. But the great thing about painting this is painting is going to allow me to have a much nicer friction fit with that in there. And it's already a skin color, so it's going to be perfect just for like a natural looking forearm with the wrist there. That's going to be excellent. Oh yeah, and what's this thing? Well, this is going to be our weapon of sorts. It's uh, kind of like a staff, right? So it's going to act as kind of a weapon in that sense. And it has a little nipper ending here to it. And uh, this you might recognize from a Bandai kit, uh, Gunpla, I think it's Gundam Build Divers or something or other, Nami. I don't know. I forget. But she's a uh, Bandai Musume kit. And this is one of her uh, weapons that she comes with. And I liked this idea because if this is going to be uh, Lachesis, uh, she measures out the lifespan of of creatures and people and stuff. Uh, so I'm going to kind of use this as a measuring stick for that. And also the nipper end is when her youngest sister, uh, Clotho, spins the, the life threads or whatever. Um, she's going to use this to clip it off um, and uh, take that thread with her to measure it out. However she sees fit. Yes, because she's the decider of destiny of peeps. Pretty uh, res big responsibility there. She's going to have a faceplate that's going to be like her uh, sister that we made already. It's going to be a blank, white kind of faceplate. So she's going to have these eyes. And this is from uh, Variable Fighter Girls kit, uh, Kairos. Yeah, she comes with a lot of nice decals. Okay, so if you uh, recall from her sister kit that I uh, made, she had these balls around the skirt. Now these things uh, I just got uh, Christmas time. They were from, you know Christmas poppers? You pull them apart and they make a popping sound and then you get toys inside. Well this, these things just held the, the ends of the poppers. And I thought, hmm, these things, I don't know, maybe I could use these eventually. So that's all these were. I just cut these balls off and then we, we just stick them in place here. But here's the problem. I only have so many of these. The gold ones are smaller than these ones. I only have four of these ones and four of the gold. And she requires six in total. So I don't really want to mix and match larger and small, although I could, but I had another idea. And that is, trip to the dollar store led me to these mini pom-poms. Now, if her color scheme is already going to be green and pink, look at this. We got perfect. So I think we're going to use these. We're going to incorporate them onto her skirt. Oh, and also we have a couple of bells here. And I was thinking of fixing these kind of on her staff thingy here at the top to give it some interest as well. Before we start busting out the uh, epoxy putty here, 
to work with our headpiece, let's do something really easy and quick. And that is uh, prepping our arms to fit nicely on. So this is great because there's a deep hole in the, uh, the bicep area of this and there's a long peg here on her shoulder. So this fits perfectly in there. And how we're going to attach it is just with magnets. We're going to put a magnet inside down here and then the other one is going to be stuck to here. These magnets I just find at, uh, on Amazon or wherever else and you can get them in all different kinds of sizes and you know shapes and they, they work great. No problem so far. Two magnets stuck together and all we're going to do is we're going to line it up and that's how much we're going to trim off of that peg. So then we, st we stick one magnet to whatever's left there and drop the other in the arm. It's going to be perfect. And I'm just going to glue them in place with this uh, Gorilla Glue. It uh, works excellent, never gives me any problems, things stick fairly well. So we're going to do that. Now, rather than just glob the, the glue in there, uh, which would make a bigger mess and require longer drying time, uh, we're just going to get a trusty toothpick and we're going to put a little dab of glue on the end and then we're just going to doop, dab in there and then drop the magnet in. And there it is. Magnet inside, super easy peasy. So we have our headpiece, but as you can see we have all this uh, meaty connection points in there and also some connection point here and this is going to stop stop it from fitting flush or fitting at all so we got to start eliminating some of this brace our eyes and start munching this away. Um, um, this is a lot of stuff. But we're just slow and steady here. We're just gonna pick this side. And we gotta be careful not to stress any of the areas too much so that the plastic doesn't break in a part that we that we need. Because that would suck. Whew, look at that. Super snap. And then we're gonna do the same over on this side. Just kind of following the natural line in here. And we're just going to cut that as well. And I think we're just going to come at it from this angle. Whew, that was scary. Yeah, so we gotta just keep on munching away and we're gonna be getting rid of just all of this excess innards and we kind of want it hollow like the rest of this so we have all this extra meat in there chewed away so it's pretty good there's not gonna be anything really stopping us uh, from getting it flush against her head um, the only problem is is now her hair her actual hair on the sides is in the way so what we need to do we need to do it anyways we need to start filing this. And we're just going to go back and forth, to and fro. And we're gonna take away, little by little. And then as you can see on top, there's gonna to be all this kind of open space there. We're gonna be filling that all in, making it look like kind of a cloth headpiece. But for now, to get it fixed on there to work with we're going to have to maybe just glue the edges into place but uh, we really want to protect the the face plate um, from sticking to all this putty we're going to be doing so we're going to mask this off and that is going to save the day really so we just get our masking tape and we're going to yeah just Stick it in there. Yeah. 
that's important because once we use the epoxy putty, if the epoxy putty touches this faceplate and then, you know, cures with this thing, the faceplate is going to be permanently fused with this and the hair, which we definitely don't want. Here we are, ready to add our epoxy putty to the back of this headpiece in here. Want it to look like kind of like a little, I don't know, part of a mask, or something that can be, you know, fastened to the head with some ribbon or what have you. So we're going to just build up this to the hairpiece as it could sit nicely as like a semi hat type thing. Yeah. So we got our uh, Tamiya epoxy putty, quick type, in equal parts here, and we're going to mix it up. And uh, we have our water to make it a little bit easier to work with, and a toothpick for packing it in where we need, and also to kind of carving out some of the details in what will be part of this. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try and do this with one hand so I don't muck her up. So the first thing we do is get a nice piece in there. And who knows, this might be pretty much all we might end up needing. And we're going to fill this, spread it around and fill it in. So as you can see, the headpiece has these uh, detail lines coming over uh, each section. We want to kind of continue that around back. See right now the detail lines, I don't know if you can see here, they're flush uh, in with this hollow bit. What we're going to do is we cover over this, we're going to build up a ridge with our epoxy putty as you can see right here so that the detail carries all the way around. See, we got those, those uh, detail lines going around as we fill this in. So here's what we got. Got those detail ridges carrying over. We got some folds. This way. This way it looks like a headpiece of some kind that's going to be sitting on there on top of her head. Okay, we gave her a bath. We did a few things here actually. I took my pin vise and I drilled a small little hole into the uh, epoxy putty. And that is so that we can get our nice ribbon in there. The beauty about these ribbons is they come uh, on the runner with this little little nub on the back. And that's perfect for our one millimeter pin vise. We just drill the hole and in goes our ribbon. Very perfectly. So that's excellent. And we did the same thing on her chest. And as you may or may not have noticed, I uh, trimmed off some of her uh, shoulder peg so that uh, magnet could fit there. And uh, then watch this. Fimp. Voila. Instant arm. I gave her a bath. All her parts are washed and clean and ready for priming. We also got her weapon here and we found a little extra part from some kind of gunpla that I just glued there to keep our bells in place. And I think that will be okay. It doesn't stand out too much and it looks like it could uh, belong to this staff. Check out this awesomeness. We have her skirt here. And uh, like I said, 
we got these little cool colorful pom-poms from the dollar store and her color scheme is going to be green and pink so we're going to vary it along each uh, hole here green pink green pink now take a look at this so these magnets are like this little size there we have it as you can see one is in there flush they fit perfect I love when this happens it's one of the most fun things about customizing and working on things is when things work out amazingly like this and then what we're gonna do as you can see here we take one of the pom-poms and we put a uh, I guess this is a sewing pin straight through it and then once we have that we are going to cut away oh, this thing's tough we're going to cut away whoa dangerous wear eye goggles there we go now it shouldn't be noticeable at all and then we have this side here and what that's going to do is it's going to where's our magnet there it is nope that's not it there it is we're just going to go choomp. maybe i have to push that in more but look at that it's brilliant and it's not going anywhere we can do 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 we can shake it <sighs> yay it's priming time look at all those pieces in bits awesome and to prime we're going to be using some of this uh fine surface primer l yes a tamiya primer can for plastic and metal okay she's all primed and ready to paint um but i didn't really decide on the color scheme i knew what colors i wanted to use but didn't exactly have the design down. So I moseyed on over here to the old tablet, took a picture of the kit that's already finished, not uh, the one in pieces, but the Atropos, yeah. And I just kind of crudely colored over her. And uh, this is what I came up with. Yeah, I kind of like it. It's like a very different feel, like a pajama type cozy feel which I really like all right before we jump into our painting time lapse let's take a look at the uh, color palette we're working with here so first off for our hair we have this nice orange and yellow and they are from these mr. hobby character paint sets so for the blonde we have uh, CP01 that's this nice pastel -y looking blonde and then for the pre-shading that we'll do it's this uh, CP12 and that is a nice pastel orange and for the clothing we have a nice green and pink also from these which is CP02 right here and CP09 right there and on these colors as you can see we have some crudely painted on stars on the pink and some uh, circles white circles on the green and we're doing those details with citadel black paint corvus black hand painting that and for the, for the circles, we're hand painting with this uh, Army Painters War Paint Matte White. And for the rest of the white on her, well, her faceplate mask thingy is just going to be a gloss white, number one. And the rest of her clothes is going to be 62 flat white. And then her gold trims and details and such I guess it's not really gold it is brass yes mr. color brass
So what do you guys think? I'm so happy with these. They look so cool. And they have such, such a different uh, feel about them and personality. Now, I learned a lot from creating the Trapos first. And that translated into helping me create her sister, Lachesis, to be even better. But, I will say this. The magnets I used for her arms, the same ones as, as these ones, mm, they could be better. They're Amazon magnets, so they're not the strongest things in the world. They do the job for a lot of these things, but I wish they were a bit stronger. So I do have some stronger ones coming on the way to test them out. But uh, these still work. Um, I also realized, uh, what else did I realize? I realized some things. Masking is still a pain in the butt, but uh, very necessary. Mm, yes. Um, I'm really happy with the separation I did with the masking here and also painting her legs in pieces. Usually I want to try and cheat and keep as many things together as possible and just paint them that way. But with her, I really wanted a clean line and I knew I wouldn't be able to achieve that hand painting. As you can see with the stars on this girl's uh, clothes, they're very kind of blotchy and stuff, but it kind of, I can get away with it because when there's so many, your eye doesn't really tend to focus on one here or there. It takes it in as a whole, so it kind of works. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was very fun. I enjoyed making her. I can't wait to make the last youngest sister, uh, Clotho. That'll be exciting. I have no idea what her design is going to be, and that'll come way down the line, I think, anyways, because I'm going to dive into other things I want to do here. Um, but yeah, let me know. Who do you like best? Do you like Atropos or Lachesis so far? Who wins in the battle? Oh, you know what else I learned? I need more bases. Oh, all those bases that come with Megami Device kits and Frame Arms Girl kits, garbage. They're all garbage. Okay, maybe not, maybe not that harsh. They can work for some things, but they're just never long enough and they never really seem to work with custom things. So I gotta get more of these bases uh, and such so that I can keep these on display. Okay, where am I? Where was I? What am I doing? Uh, who said that? So what's coming next to Sprickin' Studios? Well, as usual, a whole bunch of cool things. Some, they may come, and others, I don't know, maybe not, because I always say I'm going to do certain things, and then uh, I get sidetracked with other things. Like, I still have a motorcycle over there on my shelf that I have to build. No idea how I'm going to do that, because it's uh, above my uh, technical skills, so it may not be a video, I might just work on it, but uh, we'll see about that. I have a bunch of different diorama projects that I would like to work on um, for the channel from scratch, and of course I have the super backlog of... Misuma kits and uh, Gunplus stuff to build and everything as well. So I'm gonna see what uh, grabs my creative self and uh, I just have to run with it. But it's gonna be something cool. It may even be another custom character because I have a custom lady over there filled with too many parts. Parts from a whole bunch of different kits that, that should be illegal because uh, in your eyes it probably look like a big waste of money. But for me, I like creating my own characters and customizing things. Uh, that's where I get the, the purest joy from. So uh, you're going to be seeing more of that and more of this on this channel. Hope that interests you. But if not, we got a whole bunch of kids that are going to keep as is too, baby. Yeah, so many, super many. And it's going to be fun to do those as well. And uh, that's it. Yes, so I am Mr. Sprickin. Yeah! And I'll be seeing you with another video again real soon.